Right. So as I covered in a recent video, the mainstream media have decided that it's time for a culture war on the disabled again. I can only imagine it's because the migrant bashing isn't cutting through anymore and the Tories need a new target. So they've gone back to a tried and tested demographic, the most vulnerable, because it worked so well before. The Tory graph, as an example, put together a benefits calculator so people can work out how much caring for the most vulnerable in society is a tax burden on them. But the bit that got most people up in arms was a tweet on the Jeremy Vine Twitter account, which asked nearly four million people in the UK are being supported by the state without ever having to look for a job. That's because they've been deemed too sick to work. Is it wrong for taxpayers to fund them indefinitely? So what do you propose instead then? If you mean not to provide them with the means to live, then clearly you don't plan on them going on living, do you? The tweet was quickly deleted, but it came hot on the coattails of Tory Disability Minister Tom Persglove putting out an aggressive video dressed up in a stab-proof vest, it looked like, with DWP on the front, threatening disabled people that if they're claiming fraudulently, they will be tracked down, like some kind of passive-aggressive TV licence ad. The main benefit that disabled people claim to help with additional living expenses is PIP, or PIP, Personal Independence Payment, and despite the rhetoric from Purse Glove, the figures for PIP fraud that came out following his shameless advert showed it to be just 0.2% of the total PIP claimed, down from 0.3% the previous year. Meanwhile, the amount of tax lost to avoidance and evasion amounts to some £3,000 per person in the UK. Michelle Moan is still out there swanning around on her dodgy PPE-funded yacht somewhere. We still don't know where Dido Harding hid all the track-and-trace billions either. What did she do with it all? But, you know, bashed the blind woman down the street, or the kid who lost his limbs to meningitis, or the teenager with mental health issues, or the mum looking after the wheelchair-bound child. It's a sick society that does that, and if you lap this up, you're part of the problem. Well, this time around, those affected aren't going to take it, and a group have got together to spell out to Jeremy Vine just how he made them feel, and how their lives are affected as either being disabled or caring for a disabled person. And with the kind permission of Rachel and Jen and others from the fabulous Disabled People Against Cuts, DPAC, this was originally published on Rachel's YouTube channel, My Living With MS, she's only got 20 subscribers, so Get over there and fix that if you care to after you finish watching this. She deserves more than that. I'm delighted to be able to reproduce their video here. So take a look at this. My name is Rachel and I live with MS. I worked for 35 years in the latter years as a facilities manager. I never asked for this life. And every day just getting out of bed is a struggle. But according to Jeremy Vine and his colleagues, me and other disabled people are a burden to society. Well, we're not. We're not putting up with this hateful language. No one wakes up and asks to live like this. We deserve to be supported to live. And together, we're not asking for an apology. We are demanding one. When I was 28, I had to take early retirement from work due to chronic, severe, disabling back pain. Being unable to work wasn't a choice. It was something that I had to do. Living with chronic pain isn't a choice either. That's just something I have to do as well. Life is difficult. There's some days I can't make myself a cup of tea. Some days I can't even get out of bed. It's just life. It's life for an awful lot of people. Hello, I'm David. I'm disabled. The Jeremy Vine show is the television equivalent of an ingrowing toenail. Irritating and useless. I recommend that people switch off from this garbage and its somewhat fascist view of disabled people and tune into Deepak, that disabled people against the cuts, on social media. Thank you. Hi, this is Paula Peters. As a disabled person, life is incredibly difficult every day, from getting the right healthcare support, the right financial support, and services in place so I can live my life every day. We really don't need the hostile environment we're seeing with the dark corners of journalism like Jeremy Vine and others. We demand Jeremy Vine apologises for his scurrilous remarks on Twitter. Please, 
make a video and support us. Thanks. I'm the father of a disabled son who's got chronic ME. I also have other friends who have got various disabilities and they cannot work. It's impossible. The fire ought to be turned against MPs who are scrounging and asking the taxpayer to pay for fines, for driving fines, and telling lies to Parliament, wanting their, wanting their expenses and legal fees being paid. That's where you ought to turn your, your fire on. So uh, don't be so silly and start broadcasting something relevant and true for once. Hello, I'm Joanne Taylor. I'm a campaigner. I'm doing this video in response to the Jeremy on Five tweet and a biased article in the Telegraph, both very disturbing to read. The wording is unfavourable, highly emotive, contains hostile tones and inflammatory. Did you know that favourable treatment towards disabled service users is a part of the Equality Act? I have severe hypermobility spectrum disorder, severe chronic pain syndrome and osteoarthritis. Uh, we resist these hostile attacks on our rights. We do have to reprove our disabilities. We are not a tax burden. It is the disabled who are burdened with heavy loads of ill treatment, distress and very prolonged miseries. Thank you for your time. The problem here, Jeremy, is not only that your words have hurt and frightened a lot of our disabled community, but that for disabled parent carers like myself, yes, we do exist, you've added to the already overwhelming mountain of worries about our children and the struggles that they face in society in general. My autistic son isn't even able to be in a school. There's no suitable setting for him in our city. Yet according to you, he should be going out to work in a few short years. Will you take the blame when someone attacks him and when someone labels him as a scrounger? He's got the emotional age of a two-year-old Jeremy. You need to say sorry. I'd be more than happy to talk to you in person, but for now, you need to do the right thing. And in future, you need to include people like us in discussions that are about us. Don't go all quiet on the subject now, Jeremy. You had so much to say on your show after all. I'm openly offering here and now to come on your show and will happily explain to you in person what a 24 hour day looks like for a person living with life limiting disabilities. What do you say? Please everyone, if you know and love a disabled adult or child, if you're disabled yourself, know you are not alone. We all deserve to be supported to live without fear and without judgment. Please share. Justifiable fury, I hope you agree. I felt they held it back a little bit somewhat. They were far more professional than I tend to be, I think. A fantastic rebuttal to the dire narrative that right-wing hate rags and broadcasters are promoting right now, and it would behoove Jeremy Vine to take Rachel or Jen or any of the others featured in that video up on their word and give them a platform to respond to the vile narrative you've set. But I very much doubt he has the balls to. Nobody chooses to be disabled. Nobody chooses to lose their mobility or their sense of self. It's a lot to deal with just that, without the government and the media coming after you as well, be it via horrendous versions of events as Vine is putting it, or via the ongoing perpetual testing the government put people through to prove they're still disabled or still ill. No longer enough to take a doctor's word for anything. And that just adds to the despair and the mental anguish to go along with everything else. I'll add my own story to this as well. Others have shared. It's only right that I add my own experience of this because like Jen on that vid, I'm also a carer in case you weren't already aware, in case you haven't read the blurb on my YouTube channel. How dare you? My wife and I um, and my daughter are both disabled. I care for both of them. My wife has a poorly understood disorder called fibromyalgia as well as a few other things. And my daughter has a form of spina bifida complicated by her spinal cord being tethered at birth, attached to her spine where it shouldn't have been. And 
This went undiagnosed for years, which puts strain on the spinal cord, which is never good, as I'm sure you can imagine, caused nerve damage associated with that. Now, I am allowed to work a bit alongside claiming carer's allowance, all of £76.75 a week. How far will that get you? And you only get it, incidentally, for one person. I care for two. You don't get two lots of carers. But how can you work? How can you alleviate that feeling of being a burden with commitments such as this? And when you've been told you're a burden for so long? I was a fabricator and welder. That's my trade. Got a trade under me belt, as my dad used to tell me. I'm not a journalist. I'm not a writer, really. But I turned my hand to making videos because of how politics made me feel after having had to give up work to care for my family. And it's developing bit by bit into a business whereby I can work to an extent again, as well as have some fun doing something I get some personal satisfaction out of. And that's really lovely. And I'm grateful to everybody who helps enable that, who watch this stuff. That old adage of family always comes first, though. Well, it doesn't apply anymore, does it? Especially not if you're a Tory. Not in this country. You weren't allowed to, or you're told, or else somebody might call you a scrounger. The assessments both of my loved ones have had to have to prove their disabilities are still there. They're still ridiculous. They are designed in such a way to make them as difficult and unclear as possible. And the evidence you need to gather to have a hope of passing them is not spelt out clearly. The dread of attending them, the weeks of sleeplessness and the fear they instill, not knowing if your finances are going to be thrown into disarray at the stroke of a faceless assessor's pen, because the person you see, and you hope they're medically trained, because more often than not, they aren't, isn't the person who decides on your claim. Your claim gets decided by whatever they happen to write down. All that fear and sleeplessness, by the way, that's me, the carer, not just the people I'm caring for. I've been on antidepressants for years, all directly linked to being a carer for disabled people in Tory Britain. And now they're at it again. Jeremy Vine, the Tory graph, they don't care. They don't know, they don't get it, and they don't want to either. As much as my own health has been impacted through being a carer, that's pretty twisted. My anger grew with it. Damo rants. They're a product of Tory Britain too. I'm a monster of their making. And it has delighted me no end to see others speaking out on exactly this too. More and more people speaking out on it, their experiences, what they've gone through. And it has to be the case now that this cannot happen again, that people must sit up and say, no, I believe in living in a civilised country. I don't want the UK to be a shallow place where everyone is out to get everybody else, but in an inclusive place where we actually give a shit about each other and sympathise with those less fortunate rather than condemn them for something that is completely beyond their control. Whose side will you be on? As Paula Peters of Deepak said in that video, please do make a video of your own. I have. Now you do it. Be heard yourselves. Don't let them ignore you and don't let them ignore us either. Please do like and subscribe to Rachel's channel, My Living With MS. Support other channels calling this government's unnecessary cruelty out, the hardship it creates, demanding solutions from all sides. And of course, you can stick around this channel as well. Please do. Plenty more content like this to see here, where Vine's regular guests, here's an example, are frankly as bad as he and his team are. And I will catch you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.